What is going on, Aztec Nation? Welcome to, well, the Sons of Montezuma YouTube channel. Not really an official podcast for tonight, so hopefully you won't check any of our streaming platforms in the morning. It won't be there, but we are here now, an exclusive time for us to sit down and just talk some hoops. Of course, the title of tonight's uh, episode is, is How to Build Your Bracket, because we're looking at the bracket tonight. March Madness is here. It's an exciting week. And we want to uh, we want to take advantage of all of it. Definitely want to take advantage of all of it. Enjoy every moment until we get to that one that one shining moment. Whichever that moment is going to be. Last year, the Aztecs had the fortunes, the good fortunes, of having that one shining moment, the moment of March Madness, really. So, so before we go any further, just want to uh, ask you guys to please hit that like and subscribe button. We we're, we're doing a lot of creative things here at Sons of Montezuma, and uh, we don't want to stop. We want to keep going. Uh, of course, you guys know my name is Mateo, Mateo San Diego. You could find me on Twitter at Mateo San Diego. Gotta get I'm an Aztec warrior. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I got the pleasure right now joining me. You guys can see him on the screen, Mr. Bill O'Rear. What's up, Bill? How are you doing? Thanks for joining. Hopefully yeah. Hey, me. Mateo. Hey, thanks for uh, inviting me on tonight. It's nice to be here. I know you guys always have a great time. And we do, we do. We like to have some fun here. This is a little bit different, you know. I know the uh I already see answer three, two, one. I I I know you. I see you. Thanks for the NCAA units, Colorado State University, because boy, it looks like Colorado State's gonna win this thing. They're dominating Virginia right now in this play-in game, Bill. I mean, it's like a 20 point throwdown from the Rams. I didn't I didn't see that coming, man. Yeah, great, great win for them for the Mountain West Conference. Uh, you know, Isaiah Stevens and his teammates have really played well. And mm -hmm. I think I think uh, you might be on a little bit, little bit of a delay, Bill. A little bit of a delay, but it's all good. I've been on a delay in my life. So I understand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're just having fun tonight. No, no uh, real structure to this thing. We're just talking yeah. hoops. Going to go through this. Uh, Going to go through these brackets. Because uh, what right now, everybody, if you guys want to compete with us, and I'll, I'll take just a just a just a little moment right now for you guys to focus in. So right now we have our ESPN bracket challenge going on. We've been doing this for a couple years now, and uh, it's a lot of fun. We love to engage with our watchers, our listeners, all that good stuff. So what we want to offer up to you guys right now is to check it out, compete with us. We want you guys to compete with us in this ESPN bracket challenge. Now, what you're going to want to do, I'm going to share my screen here right now. Is you're going to want to go to ESPN.com. You're going to go down to the men's tournament challenge. And the first thing you want to do, if you want to compete in this bracket tournament challenge, you want to go up to the groups tab right there. Once you get to the groups, go ahead and search. And you're going to search for Sons of Montezuma. That is the name of our group. You can see it there. Already got a couple members in there. And what you're going to want to do is enter your name, either your social media handle as your name or your you know, first and last name, and just add yourself to the group. And what you're going to want to see, especially right here, is the password. You want to keep that password protected. The password is kiss the rings, no spaces, kiss the the rings. So once you join, it'll ask you for the password. You just jump on in and you can compete with us. Basically what we've been doing every year, Bill, is, uh, well, whoever wins, whoever can win and beat us in this bracket challenge, you're going to get a free t-shirt from the sons of Montezuma.com shop, online shop. Definitely check that out. All of our different products, our NIL products, any of those t-shirts of your choice, you can win one of those if, if you guys can beat us. So looking forward to that. It's always a fun time to uh, shoot your shot in these uh, in these brackets. Bill, we got a couple knuckleheads from the Sons of Monty team that are ready to jump in here. Come on, guys. It's 65 to 40. Colorado State is demolishing Virginia. You guys don't want to watch that game. You guys want to be in here chatting it up with us. What's going on, team? What's going on, Aztec Flavor? Thank you for joining. Hey, that I don't know if you watched any of that game. That was horrendous. They went they for uh well for both of them originally but for Virginia 
it was like five minutes in, it was four to two, Virginia up four to two. And they're they're a good three shooting team and they're a good defensive team. So I, I expected it to be a little, you know, different. They went like oh for seven, did not over they went 17 missed field goals in a row or 18 or something. They went for 52 real minutes because it was between halves without scoring a field goal. <laughs> oh, God. 52 in real life minutes. God, so that's your that's your number three ACC team, everyone. Yeah, against your number seven Mountain West, right? Mm-hmm. Number uh, seven. I'm not yeah. sure they could beat the number eleven team, Air Force. I think they'd have a <laughs> if hard they shoot time. like that, they can't. But I think they uh, they average. They probably would. They, but, Virginia would have got bounced in like the first round on Wednesday in the playing game. It depends. Is it is it the Air Force that played uh, at UNLV or at New Mexico, or is it the Air Force that played the rest of the mm-hmm. season? Yeah, doesn't matter. Or is I it the Virginia that played today? Or the Virginia that played, you know, a week ago. Well, I think the Mountain West is uh, they're proving themselves right now. Early anyway, that's undefeated my take. in March Madness right now. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah, the the Mountain West they're they're showing themselves a little a little strong in this this opening game. I mean, it's finally good to see the Mountain West win one besides San Diego State, right? So yeah. hey, hopefully hey. Boise can get it too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, that wasn't just a win. That was an ass kicking too. Yeah, that was a statement by the by the Mountain West. We needed to make a statement. We came out and made a statement. I mean, our teams yeah. were seated way too low in this tournament. And you know, thank you, thank you, Colorado State, for coming out yeah. there and serving you know a message to the NCAA committee. And it was everybody. That, it wasn't just uh, Steven. They, they screwed us with the seating. Yeah. Boy, oh boy. Well, guys, what's going on? What's going on? Are you guys ready to get into this bracket? I've already given everybody the information, the details on how to compete against us in the bracket challenge. Are we ready to go through this thing? We got uh, two games down yeah. tonight, which we already know the results of. So let's. Do, did ready you guys go already go me? and create your your bracket, your or at least your entry? Or are you guys going to do it together with us? Like we're going to go through it. Me. Yeah, you. Me? Yeah, you. We're going to do it live. We're gonna do it live. Let's do it live. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well. That's what we're here for. Let me pull up this bracket. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Let me. Uh, let's go ahead and share the screen. See if I can share the screen one more time. And let's see. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. So we're inside the bracket area and uh well my bracket mr ortiz's bracket is right here do guys do what do you guys want to start which region do we want to start in i know they announced the east first you guys want to do east south north or west bill you make the call which region you want to start with yeah let's go with the east because the aztecs are in there and then we'll uh you know, build under that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Let's get back up here to the east. Okay. So the Hard first, choice. I know, guys. I mean, boy, uh, Stetson uh, is that that there a school named after a hat? Uh, the that's Mad the, the fighting, the Mad Hatters, the fighting Stetson. Is, is that what? Is uh. it? <laughs> I mean, I, I've never, I don't think I've ever heard of Stetson. Um, I, I can't say I know. You you do a Google search, you're going to find a hat. Um, you know, Stetson University or Stetson College or something. I used to live in Florida, so I knew some people that went there. It's like kind of like a very private, it's a private rich school. Um, but I guess they're good at basketball because they're in the tournament. I guess I guess they are good at, at basketball. Um, if we look down and see see. Uh, do we, we don't think we need to spend too much time on this pick, I, but I, it's no. just inter- interesting. Interesting no. to see uh, yeah. uh, who's who's UConn got their first thing. So I mean, I, I don't know what you guys are picking. Yeah, but, uh, like, I mean, was, uh, congratulations! <laughs> congratulations, you made the tournament exit stage right. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right, now here comes a fun one, right? FAU and Northwestern. Now FAU. Didn't win their conference. Am I correct? They didn't win the tournament. Did they win the regular season? 
No, they had two quad four losses too. Okay, but they do have me... a win on a neutral court versus Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. That's sustaining them. It feels like that's sustaining them. Oh, uh, how how are you feeling about this one, Fiend? Northwestern? Okay. Um, really have not watched a whole lot of Big Ten basketball, so I'm not exactly sure how I feel about this game. Um, they did beat Purdue once. Yeah, did they win at home? Uh, yes, it was at home. I mean, they lost to Minnesota. Eh, they lost to Rutgers. Um, you know what? I I think I think FAU has that magic from last year. I think they're they'll put. I it feel together like they have the, the potential. You know, they had the yeah. potential last year. So even though I think both teams are about equally skilled, I don't know much about either team here. I know FAU was a wild ride up and down at the beginning of the year, but. Chris yeah. Collins is a good coach, but I I would, and FAU is a two and a half point favorite. I I would I would pick FAU in this game. Yeah. One in doubt. I I realize two and a half isn't a lot, but one in doubt. I think Vegas odds are FAU, good. FAU FAU did come out of the East Region last year too. Don't forget that. Yes, they yes, were yes. the Final Four. We could also pick. look where's the game being played and if they've rested or something, but that's all built into the Vegas odds. Every little thing about you know star players injured or any you know anything else, it's all built into Vegas. So <clears throat> okay, all right. I think just for the storyline, definitely not. <laughs> I just want to pick that. FAU for the storyline. Just give them a crack yeah. at UConn and see what see what happens if they if they could play UConn well. Yeah, that'd be a fun one to watch. Yeah, Northwestern lost to Chicago State, so I'm fading them. <laughs> <laughs> You can't lose to Chicago State. FAU lost to Florida Gulf Coast. At home. Uh, yeah, but it's not yeah, Chicago State. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. I think uh, that's, FAU that's lost different. at UAB, speaking of UAB. Uh, In a three-point game. But. Speak, speaking of UAB. All right, well, all right. FAU, they could definitely take on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In Spokane, Friday morning, 10.45 a.m. I know where – I don't know where I'll be watching it, but I, I know I will be watching it, unlike Mike Tortolot. But, um, you know, fifth seed, 12th seed, it's always a notorious matchup. It's not always the case. But, you know, uh, I, I don't think I'm going to be a homer if I pick the Aztecs. They got an All-American mm. – an official All-American. Of course, it's third team, but it's all right. It's no matter. Um I will say this. I I got a chance. I got a chance to watch some of UAB's highlights from their championship game against Temple. And guys, I was I was I was impressed by them, but I was just so not impressed by Temple. How did they play an 11 seed in a conference championship? Like that is ridiculous. They obviously demolished them. Um so I'm feeling pretty good, a, a little better about this game than I was last night in the live with the guys. And uh, I have no shame in picking the Aztecs in this game. There's your guy, Yaxel Lendeborg. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What do you think? What do you think? Any any more thoughts since last night? No, I mean, I think the Aztecs should win this game. Mm. I mean, if, if we lose to UAB – um, that that to me is a bad loss. I don't care that yeah. they won the the AAC championship. That league was not very good this year. I mean, we had we were a very deep league, very talented as we saw tonight with and Colorado we State well. taking out. Yeah, I mean, and I'll, I, I'll I, even include uh, not to open some wounds here, but include the New Mexico game and even include the uh, the last two, the, the Boise and UNLV. I've had some people saying, oh, I don't know, we really played well recently. Yeah, I thought we did. I thought we even played well the last two games of the conference season, and then I thought we played well in every game in Vegas. So, you, you know, you could play well and win. You could play well and lose. But I thought we played well against UNLV. I thought we played well against Utah State. I thought we played well against New Mexico. I thought we played well all these games. So I feel like we should be able to beat them. You never know, you know. Boy, what looking do you at think, Bill? 
looking at their notable games, huh? Huh? You know, I, I think, yeah, you know, I, I think the Aztecs will win this game. I think physically, until you play against the Aztecs, you don't realize how mm-hmm. tough it is to score. I also think that during this run that, uh, you know, we're going to get a couple guys that are going to step up, maybe Reese Waters, maybe Elijah Saunders, or even Miles Bird, you know, that's another guy. Because in the tournament, Usually that's what gets you over the hump in these close games. Somebody else steps up. So I feel good about the Aztecs throughout the tournament. It just depends on how far they go here. All right, all right. So the Aztecs advance. Let's put them through. Okay. Now here's a fun one. Auburn and Yale, guys. I know that uh, we want to talk so much about CBM, Chad baker Mazaras, or a former Mm -hmm. Aztec. Uh, if that does happen, uh, we'll have a we'll have a pretty juicy show to talk about after uh, if both of these teams can meet each other. But I have them obviously beating Yale. I think what Auburn has done, obviously winning the SEC uh, tournament was incredibly impressive. They they are like we said last night. They're on a hot hot run right now. I, I just don't see I don't see Yale being able to to get past them. Anybody got thoughts? pretty pretty solid i think auburn's a good team i don't i don't know too much about these guys um either either auburn or yale i you know looking at the schedule for auburn it looks a little more impressive i'm i think i'm the least qualified of us for here to to be making a lot of these predictions for what it's worth i know metric metric auburn's five in the net so they they like them i think they played a lot of hard games and so they lost some of those but they won some of those too so they're they're three and seven quad one, but that's similar to some other teams we know. So, I mean, Yale's got nothing on their resume. It, it's it's nothing really to yeah. be excited about. So, okay, I mean, that's gonna do it for for that top top section of of the East. Now we get on to BYU and Duquesne. Please, is Duquesne. A, please, Duquesne. Yeah, is that what it is? They, they BYU had, and the conference has had a different uh, winner the last eight times in a row. By the way, and oh, really? Duquesne made it eight. They needed to be Duquesne to make it eight, and they they did it. So. <laughs> Talk about parody. I think Atlantic 10. <laughs> oh boy. Uh okay. I'll pick the cheaters. I'll be the first to say it. <laughs> <laughs> the cheaters. Yeah, I think that's that's something we, we obviously know. BYU, their quality. So uh yeah. Decane, let's uh any anything notable? Anything notable that would change my mind? Loss, loss, loss. Win at St. Bonnie's. I mean, they're, they're a bit stealer, right? So. Yeah, they beat Dayton. I mean, yeah. that would truly be an upset. Just a, a truly be an upset. I think if Decane were to be able to pull that off, so I'm gonna select BYU. If I if you guys got any yeah. arguments, let the main me know. thing is the the eight, nine, seven, tens that are more 50-50 games. And for those, it almost doesn't matter. Don't doesn't matter as much because they play, you know, a one or two seed. And you also, for what it's worth, point wise, you mostly get your points in the, you know, final four elite eight or whatever. You know, if you pick, uh, you know, Houston in your final four and they lose in the second round, that's that matters way more than picking which eight seed or nine seed loses to the one. Yeah. 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 Which you guys, I, let I us... it should be. But I digress. <laughs> Okay, all right. We got one, Mr. Mike Tortolot, trying to trying to slander this this live talk, calling us nets. Nets. You meant to say me. nerds. There, you yeah. meant to say nerds. You meant to say nerds. Who's the nerd Net now? Nerd, Net nerds right. like me and my Auburn five here. <laughs> even even without this guy, we can't get away from Mike. Can't get away. Get your spelling. Get your spelling correct, sir. All right. At least so. us nerds can spell. <laughs> Oh boy, Bill! I got you on mute for some reason. If you if you can unmute it, let me know. Otherwise, you know, hopefully you can get your your mic. I'm these guys. I'm writing down notes on everything Green says. <laughs> All right. Well, that's good. That's good. All right, guys. Illinois. And boy, Morehead State, Morehead State Eagles. Now, I'm I'm a little biased. I want to choose Illinois because they have a. Uh, prominent Aztecs son on the team. Okay, but so, hear uh, me out. <laughs> and let, let me know if you you want to cut me out on here. But in 2021, Oral Roberts beat two seed Ohio State. In 2022, 
St. Peter's beat the Peacocks beat number two, Kentucky. And in 2023, Farley Dickinson beat Purdue, a number one seed. So three mm-hmm. years in a row, we've had teams with phallic names beating one or two seeds. <laughs> I realize Illinois is a three seed, but they're playing against a team I don't want to say their name. <laughs> no, I'll pick the Illini. I'm just kidding. I think, I think Illinois is a good team. Oh, boy. You never know. Oh, boy. Fantastic so flavor guy. Magic on them. Flavor guy, bring in, bring in the heat. Bring in the heat. Bring in the fire, boy. I tell you. I think everyone would like Moorhead State to win. <laughs> but um, I, I think the Fighting Illini, having won the <laughs> Big Ten Conference Championship, having come off of that, I think you, they'd yeah. have to be favored big. And I mean, is I, there any is I there don't. any reason to think that an upset could happen? You gotta pick one upset, you know, there's guaranteed to be at least one. I mean, if upsets are 10%, then you're better not trying to pick the 10%. You're better yeah. just picking the the 90%, 100% of the time. <laughs> but uh if you if there's one you have a reason for, go for it. <laughs> I mean, strictly for the name, right? That that'd be yeah. Right. Fun way to choose your bracket. All right, let's look at Washington State and Drake. Drake is Drake. Uh, has he made any appearances at the Bulldogs games? I know he likes to hop around to Kentucky and whoever's front running. Uh, Drake is uh, he's got his own team, he could got, got his own jersey he could wear. I don't know if he supports them or not, but uh, I think this see. is actually kind of a 50 50 game from what I saw, um, just from Vegas. Um, mm-hmm. And Wazoo's been up and down. I think what they beat Arizona twice and everything, but then they've been losing more at the end. I, I I could pull them up really quick. I have a friend who's a big Washington State fan, so yeah. And then, but uh, I they they I think they've been kind of up and down. I could see Drake getting the upset in this game. They won the um, the Missouri Valley Conference over uh, Kareem Abdul Jabbar uh, from Indiana State in the title game. It's too bad that he didn't make the tournament this year. Um, but Drake's a good team. They have a, a coach and a coach's son. I I like teams with with coaches' sons on it. Um, not named. Dean is a big Boise fan here. We got no, the biggest Boise fan not, here. Not, but you got look. You got to give props to Max Rice, right? He is a yeah, great yeah. He's a, he's a good player. His dad is a coach. He's a coach's son. Jared Lucas is a coach's son. He is a great player. Mm-hmm. Drake has um, – They get a lot of flack for it, I think, and, but they, they, they work do. hard, yeah. They do. But they, the DeVries son, the, the father and son uh, coach um, with, um, you know, with Drake, I mean, they he, he is a really, really good player. And so um, when you're a lower seed, I think you have to, you know, uh, have like high IQ basketball to win games against – better athleticism and so i think I, seven I, ten isn't even really lower upper seed i think tens might have even won more than sevens but yeah i don't know but i i would i honestly i'll i pick the upset i'll pick drake i bet it's a common they, upset i'd still say it's 50 50 and look at they destroyed nevada reno in the lawler center 72 mm. 53 that's that's no joke that's no joke beat bradley three times uh, looked like they were all pretty. Did handily. Bradley beat Utah State, or am I thinking of somebody else? Yeah, that, that happened. Yeah. Wow. Beat Indiana State three times. I mean, these are conference mates that they beat three times. That's not easy. That's 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 a lot of respect. I, I would, would it be impressive that. if they beat Arizona twice? Oh, I'm, I'm yeah, just saying because because yeah, yeah, Wazoo that, did. So yeah, that, I don't know. Looking at that, that's even. And I, that's I do think that Wazoo more. plays a little harder for schedule. I, I think it's about fifty mm. fifty. Don't spoil and my upset. Yeah, as you can, you can, just don't feel <laughs> obligated to pick a upset or this is <laughs> but, but I could see it going either way. Maybe I'd pick Drake. Well, in solidarity with my good friend Sean Nelson, who is an Aztecs fan, but also a Washington State as his secondary team. I'm not gonna go against his team. I don't want to see him uh you know have that loss. So I'm gonna pick the Cougars. Hopefully, and then they uh, can soon. both win with BYU and make it a Sweet 16. The Cougars hey, win. there we go. There we go, yeah. <laughs> Iowa State, South As Dakota much State. as I want to root for SDSU here, I don't think. That. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Based on that alone, 
we got to go with the Cyclones. Got to go with the Cyclones, man. I mean, yeah. they are. They're good at FCS. Really good. Cyclones are all. So I had, and I'm I'm not as aware of, uh, you know, non-SDSU teams as you guys are, but I had Iowa State winning the whole thing in just the, the first bracket I threw together. So. Did you? You just zip through, zip through. Well, let's let's take it from there. Iowa State, Washington State, work our way back up. Uh, I would I would pick Iowa State if I was questioning. Yeah, Washington. and if they and I think right. if they played Drake, they'd still probably. I mean, you never know, you know. But right. I think that it's a safer pick. I think that if even if you did think Washington State would be a 50-50, that you'd have to be picking them to win the first and the second. And I think it's far more likely that Iowa State in general ends in a Sweet Sixteen. So I, I think bracket wise, you kind of want to think about path a little bit. Certainly, certainly. Any objections, Fiend or Bill, Iowa State? I, I, I don't think you guys would have any. This nope. one is a tough one. BYU, Illinois. To me, this one is a tough, tough pick. That's when the rubber kind of kind of meets the road. Um, and kind of similar know. to what I was saying, I think Duquesne's more likely to beat BYU than Moorhead is to Illinois. Not that that matters a whole lot, though. Um, but this is a tough one. I'll, I'll let you guys talk this one out. <laughs> Fiend, got anything on Illinois? That's your neck of the woods growing up. Yeah, I mean, Terrence Shannon is um, the best player on the floor uh, in that game. Market Marcus Domask was huge in the Big Ten championship, and he's he's been a big part all year. And then you got a big guy like Coleman Hawkins, uh, Rod Hawkins' son, former Aztec, uh, Aztec for life, I should say. Um, you know, a guy I think that we recruited uh, out of high school um, playing, you know, some of his best basketball. I, I think Illinois is just too talented and they should they should beat BYU. Yeah. If you look at their game, schedule, they, they don't really have bad losses. They win most of their games. They they lost by a point at Penn State. You know, they've they've lost to Purdue and lost to Marquette and everything like they they win most of their games. Won the last four, lost to Purdue. Won the last three, lost. Um, the only thing that I would say is I think that maybe the big, you know, Big Twelve was a better conference this year in the Big Ten. Oh, definitely. And I think that some of that stuff is factored into the, the net. They're just adjacent, twelve and thirteen. But where they finish? Where did right. BYU finish in the pack? Yeah, the Big Twelve. In comparison to Illinois in the in the Big Ten. Yeah. All right. All right. You guys convinced me. Yeah, I don't think I needed much convincing. I knew it was going to be a tough match. I, th I think I'd pick Illinois, but I think it's a little closer to 50 50. Yeah. I don't even know why you get out of the first round, but they, they probably do. My mind says Illinois, and my heart definitely says Illinois. So I'm not going to. Not gonna go against that. Your heart doesn't go with a. Oh, I thought you were talking about Illinois and Iowa State. I was like, I think your defense team is an Aztec. No, 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 no. Working our way back up, Auburn and San Diego State. Oh boy, oh boy, this is a tough one, guys. Uh, my heart says the Aztecs. I know who Barkley picked. Barkley, well, oh, boy. Uh, he picked us to lose like every game last year, and then he picked us to beat UConn. <laughs> oh boy, Barkley. I mean, yeah, yeah. My, my homer will come out here, and I'll say, I guess I'll pick SDSU. It's by no means a guarantee, but I don't know. I don't know as much about Auburn, though. If you guys know more, the only thing I like about this game is it's being played on the West Coast, mm -hmm. and Auburn has to go. A long ways, and their fans have to travel to Spokane. Um, yeah, I, I, good, no. Auburn. I, I shared this on the pod last night. I think Auburn is playing more like a two seed, and uh, this is just—it's yeah. not a good matchup. I mean, they have an All-American of their own, and um, Janai Broom, uh, and you know we have Jaden Ladee. But I mean, they've—they're a really talented, deep team, mm -hmm. and um, I think they're playing their best basketball. They're on a roll, and I don't think we are. So I would—I mean, you know, the homer in me wants to take the Aztecs, but uh, I would be happy if we made the round of thirty-two, mm. and that was the end of the season. Uh, Auburn is just a a, a really good mm -hmm. team, but 
you know, hopefully San Diego State surprises me. Um, last year, I don't think I had San Diego State over Alabama, right? And I don't know if a lot of Aztec fans had San Diego State over Alabama. I remember listening to Sons of Money, and you guys were like, you were like, fiend, that's a good matchup. We could beat Batman. I'm like, this guy's crazy, you know? <laughs> And I mean, feel like a good matchup. I feel like we'd we'd have won that seven out of ten times or something. I felt like I felt like yeah, it was a good matchup in that like the defensive teams that were kind of structured like us, like Tennessee, were able to knock off Alabama. Um, I just this year I just don't know if we have the shooting guys. Um, our, our we got to get hot. Like if our guys get hot from the mm-hmm. outside, if Paris Tremel show and, up, yeah, Paris Tremel, Butler, Butler um, yeah. you know. Uh, I'm going to be a homer. I'm going to be a homer Thanks, because I, I think Ladie, I think Ladie's going to go off and I think the supporting cast is going to show up. I think they're going to be plenty motivated to get this more, game I'm done. Everyone's going to hate on me, man, if the Aztecs win. <laughs> ah, you can't be afraid Mystic of that. Fan, optimistic fan, you know, it's, it is what it is. Nobody the, the other question, if we, if we want to look ahead a little bit more, is if let's say we're picking UConn, right? then who's more likely to beat UConn because you'd be punished more for picking the wrong one in this one if they end up beating UConn slash FAU slash Northwestern, mm, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, as I much as I want to pick, pick us Aztecs, against UConn, that's this. Is, yeah. I guess we'll go back to Illinois, Iowa State or something. Yeah. And and I I mean, I think I feel like this Aztecs team almost has a better chance to beat this UConn team than last year's. So mm-hmm. That's just my my gut feeling. From what I see, but well, UConn's uh, been even more dominant this year. I think. I know, I know, and that's the crazy part. And we we like, lost a lot. Yeah, they're playing at the TD Garden in Boston. I know. It's a drive for. It's a bus ride for UConn. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, yeah. I still feel that way though, but uh, I'm not going to pick that way. Is I. I I've I've seen this before. I've seen it before, and I got to uh, be I'm honest. Really and I know I'm a homer here, but I've. I have 50 50. I, I picked uh, UConn, then I picked us, then I picked UConn, then I picked us, like on my bracket. <laughs> but we, yeah. we could, you know, never know. Anybody could lose in the first round. Bill, any thoughts on, on what we got going with the Aztecs and so far? I just, I just think, you know, if, if they have. Sorry, I'm getting some of that double feedback, but. Okay, so. I think if they make eight or nine threes in a game like they've shown they're capable of this year, uh, the physicality of the game, you know, uh, will match up okay. And, uh, but they got to shoot the ball really well to have a chance. And the same thing with Auburn. It's going to be a tough game, but if San Diego State can make some shots, they got a chance. All right. All right. Well, I think T Mac, I don't care what y'all pick, I am SDSU to the final. Four. I love it. I love it. Love, love the bravado, T Mac. I hope don't he's ever, right. Don't ever change, T Mac. Me don't too. I hope T Mac is right. <laughs> okay, we can't ignore these. Thank you so much, Quinn, for your generosity. I'm back. The last time we went to the Final Four in 2019, our first and second round games were on the West Coast. Of course, everybody knows if you were in last night's episode, Quinn Thomas, he is an Auburn fan. An Auburn guy. He says, We have Broom, who's also our all American big man. I did see that. I did see that. Would be a good matchup inside. And of course, he's talking about Broom going against Ladie if uh, that Auburn San Diego State matchup is a thing. Does he think uh, Auburn will beat uh, UConn? Is another question. Uh, what's that? What's that? What's that, guys? Repeat that. I oh, said I they're both. Gonna... Oh, you go. Go ahead. <laughs> They're both third team all or third team all Americans. I think that you know. So I feel like Ladie and and Broom and, and Janai Broom like they basically go ahead, ahead. cancel each other out, right? So then it becomes the supporting cast, and you know, uh, if Chad Baker Mazzara gets a shot against us, man, that dude is going to be fired up to play against <laughs> us. Well, we could be fired up against him, but yeah, maybe he'd be more. I but it so. can be I bad too, you know. You get too emotional, you get tech, or you take bad shots. You know, you never know. That's one thing. Uh, he definitely was. He was emotional. That spark plug, that spark plug that mm-hmm. that the Aztecs, I think, could use, right? And they need that. But he's on the opposite. opposite uh, a quick yeah. question for Quinn is what he thinks is uh how his tigers would do against UConn. 
if let's say, you know, Auburn wins two and UConn wins two, which you never know. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know in the chat. Let us know in the chat, Quinn. We'll, we'll uh, just go ahead and type it in there. We'll, we'll, we'll read it out. We'll read it out. Hmm. Okay, guys. Illinois, let's, Iowa uh, State. Yeah, man. Let's uh, big eyes. I, I, I think I would go Iowa State with that one as well. I think that that's uh, that's where the buck stops for for Illinois. Hmm. And I think uh, Illinois has a harder route um, with playing against probably BYU. I'd take okay. Illinois. I would take a good team. Yeah. What what happens when uh, big offense, big defense? Yeah. Oh. So Quinn says he thinks they match up against UConn nice. just as good as anybody, but it'll be tough to win. I, I agree if we with that lose to you, I hope we. They beat got Auburn. that same if situation. Lose, I hope they, they, gotta, they got that same situation where they got to go up to the Northeast and play UConn. It's virtually a, a road game for them, and um, I don't. It'll be after after what UConn's after record rest, at home right? is this year, but I. Match is pretty good. At least for the Sweet yeah, Sixteen, you get to rest. You're, you're playing, yeah. It's... <laughs> what flavor? You got headphones? I think you might need some headphones, man. I think I think the timing is off on this stream a little bit for all of us. I don't know if you got any headphones, man, but uh, you know, we'll see. We'll yeah, see I could get them out in a little bit. But yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. So Quinn, I I, I would agree. I think uh, Auburn. Yeah. That that would be a fun matchup against UConn. I think they match up pretty well size wise and all that good stuff. Explosiveness, emotional explosiveness, absolutely. Mm. I'll say this if UConn gets the the natty this year, they'll they'll have earned it. There'd be no easy route, you know, right? I mean, yeah. even if you know we lose to UAB and Auburn loses to Yale, no, there's no easy route, you know. No. All right, guys. UConn, Iowa State. I'm picking UConn. That was my pick. One of my picks, I, I actually put money down. I, I'm not mm. afraid to admit that. I put money down on them. So, represent the East, UConn. All right, let's fly through, guys, because, we, you know, we're having some fun, but let's make these picks. All right, Wagner all the way. Wagner all <laughs> the way. Bam. Okay, all right. Jokes aside. Everybody thinks that we, we, we got pick. two of them, we're going to get a bunch more. I, I think the next, like, 10, 10, 20 years, we get one or two more. Maybe zero, you know, maybe three, but 16. I'd say one or two in the next 15 years, you know. Not North Carolina though. That's not happening. That's not that happening. You never know. They, you know, they're they're as capable of losing a first round as, as Purdue or UConn or anyone else. But yeah, mm -hmm. no, uh, let's know. let's pick UNC. Yeah. I, I, I like RJ. Next Davis. one's a 50 50 game. What do you think on this one, Fee? Mississippi State, Michigan State. Oh, I go Mississippi State. Michigan. I think Michigan no. State has not been playing their best basketball i think they got in the tournament Ups based and downs. on their name only yeah I, I, mississippi state i think is a much better talented team I, I well i don't know if talent is the right word i just think they're playing better basketball yeah yeah i would go with them now here's a fun one st mary's grand canyon that'll be fun to watch that's gonna be a lot of fun to watch i mean uh, i'm tempted to pick grand canyon personally i think i'd pick st mary's We've seen them both. Of course, they were. I know, I know. Pretty, pretty different lost early. early on. Yeah, but Grand Canyon really not going to be around. They were home. like losing record. Like we blew them out, and they lost a game before and the game after, and then they just won like what twenty two in a row. Their only losses afterward to Gonzaga, and one one out of three. <laughs> oh damn! Team, I'm gonna have to. I got to go to Medellin now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, absolutely. If you open up a salsa dancing bar, absolutely. We're going there to celebrate. We're taking a Sons of Montezuma trip down there. That happens. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And good on you. Don't even drink. Don't even drink. Just dance. Dance. Just dance. 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 <laughs> oh, we'll be there. Oh, I'm going to I'm gonna trip. pick St. Mary's, I think. They're, you know, I, I think people tend to underrate Grand Canyon, and I don't want to underrate them, and they've been good, and People say, oh, well, they, you know, don't play anybody, but they, you know, played us and everything, right? Like, they, I think they're a good team. I just think St. Mary's is better. The West Coast Conference has been fair. You know, I, they're missing BYU now. And at the start of the year, we thought that Gonzaga and St. Mary's were bad. They've won a bunch of games in West Coast Conference, which maybe, you know, boost the metrics a little bit. But they've, you know, they've played hard teams in non-conference and they've won their conference. And I don't know, maybe it's a circular definition type thing, but if, uh, you know, Santa Clara beat Gonzaga and 
everything. And maybe that, you know, that some of the, the games are competitive. So, well, I'm going out on a limb. I'm picking GCU. Right. I'm doing it. I'm doing He's it. Going with the havoc. Yes, sir. Scare money don't make money. Okay. <laughs> Alabama, money. Charleston. We know Charleston well. Uh, that would be funny um, if Charleston won. You never know. They're on a hot one. They're on a hot, they're on a hot one. That's for sure. Uh, both teams we beat last game. year. The, the mm -hmm. consolation prize, these two guys get to play each other, but I'm, I'm picking Bama. The simple question is who do they bring back also? Because like you said, we, you know, as Aztec fans are more familiar with at least 40 minutes, you know. Yeah. So that's it. They're playing each other, so matchups are different from how they play SDSU. But... They've got a All-American in Mark Sears. Mm -hmm. He played last year for Alabama. Guard play wins games in March. Doesn't matter who wins. GCU is going to beat them both. Go Sweet 16. <laughs> okay, we'll here's see, the never know. We'll see. Yeah. They're not even Clemson. getting their last game, Marys. Well, yeah, we'll get there. Clemson, New Mexico, guys. I know oh, I'll pick the Lobos. I'll New Mexico the just waxes them. I'll, I'll pick the popular. Blowout. A la wow. Colorado State versus Virginia. That's a bold claim. ACC, we're coming for you. we coming for you, ACC. We, we're, we're out to embarrass you <laughs> this year. So Lobos are going to just embarrass the Tigers. I can't wait. Bama does have a big <laughs> offense, so they can't play defense. But that's that's kind of the other side of the coin. Yeah. All right. Do we want to pick Baylor? Baylor. Do we want to look at a little more? The Over Bears. Bias looking at a number we recognize and a name we recognize. The Bears. The Bears. Okay. Yeah, I think that's an obvious one. I'm not going to. Bad news, Bears. Um, so. Now another this is one. A good Nevada, game. Nevada. Nevada. This is Dayton. a good game. I like the Mountain West. I also low key like Dayton, but Dayton's got a. Um, they got an All American too. First teamer. Mm. Deron Holmes, Man, Jared Lucas. Player, dude. This is going to be a lot of fun. The Flyers. I think, I think I'd pack. pick Nevada, but I don't. I don't know. Where is that game being play? played? That's a good point. Utah is, is that in Salt Lake City? Salt Lake oh, yeah, City. Yeah, Nevada. Nevada. Got the, Nevada. All yeah, the way they got altitude. Yeah, yeah Dayton's going to be choking on that thin air. What? Yep. Wow. Okay. Yeah, Nevada's going to Nevada's going to win that one. All right, I like that. The Nevada West. does. They, they could even give Arizona a hard time. Arizona, Long Beach State, and Nevada is has the uh, players. I don't know how Long Beach State got in the tournament, so Arizona. <laughs> they were they. I think they they fired the coach right before the tournament yeah. too. And the the Big West isn't like bad this year. You know they're they've got some good. You know, congrats. On the West, you know they're not a they're not a you know power five or six or whatever. You know, but yeah, good that's job. Crazy the long beat That's there. fantastic. They no. beat they beat uh, USC and Michigan, but those didn't really age well. I think. No. no. Yeah. No. No. Yeah, let, let's pick Sorry, let's flavor guy. Up. Yeah, Arizona all the way. <laughs> you yeah. never know. It'd be it'd be cool if Long Beach State won. As much as dude, I like Keyshawn Johnson, I know. Dude, I, I if guess, we could yeah. get a New Mexico versus Nevada game in the Sweet Sixteen in Los Angeles, that'd Man. be awesome. <laughs> New Mexico. If, if that was Nevada. in LA and we were out of the tourney or something, like I'd kind of want to go to that just to see it. Exactly. I guess I just watch it on TV, right? But like that would be great. That would be fantastic. Just look at that. There's just only one thing I'm looking for to more. We'll, we'll get it's to not moment. at the Thomas and Mac. It's at the what, what do they call it now? I don't even know. It used to be Staples Center. Is it still <laughs> Crypto.com crypto or is it something else? Uh, yeah, Crypto.com. All right. Move. I wasn't trying to scare Please nobody. 16. You, you never awesome. know. I don't think it's impossible for New Mexico and Nevada to win, but I think I'd pick Baylor, Arizona. No. No, I'd go with, I'd go with New Mexico. Go with New Mexico. Really, really. I, I don't know enough yeah. about Baylor too. Yeah, you could even go with New Mexico. They just they have a you, hard man, I looked at their, gotta, I looked at their adjusted, play Clemson and play Baylor. Yeah. I looked at their adjusted stats for like the last five games. They're on a hot streak right now. I mean, I'm getting confidence for the Mountain West based on how Colorado State played today. Um, you know, and they got they got bounced what in the semis against uh, they played New Mexico, right? In the semis. Uh, no. Bill, what you got? What you got on this? Yeah, I like New Mexico. Also, they're playing well. You know, uh, Dent was you know. 25% last game. I think with three really good guards, I think what Fiend said earlier, guards win in this tournament. Uh, 
you know, and with their big guys, they could rebound, they could block shots. They don't give up much easy. They play hard. So if they shoot the ball well, if Mashburn has a good tournament, uh, they have a good shot against almost anybody. I, I like agree. You, you know, their, their adjusted efficiency ratings, if you look at them uh, versus like Clemson, I shared this on the pod last night, Clemson, um, Baylor, even even Arizona, they're 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 playing better. They're playing at a higher level. They're playing great defense and they can score. Guards win games in in, in March and they're getting a lot of rebounds from their big guys. I really really. Like I I think Baylor has a, had a rougher schedule. They went and they went ten nine quad one, New Mexico five six quad one, and quad one is a kind of generic. I know you know and that's not perfect, but like they you know they played Kansas, they like, they played Iowa State, they played Houston. Mountain West is good, but I, I do think Big 12 is rough too. But as you guys are talking about, maybe they don't they don't match up well against New Mexico. Now this is the tricky one, New Mexico, mm-hmm. Arizona. That'd be That's fun to watch one. with their sort of offensive styles. Oh yeah. Kasha you know, Johnson. I'll let you guys that's, talk more on that one. If that's the matchup. Give me the uh, Lobos, man. Give me the Lobos. Yeah. Wow. You're gonna lose Give me to the Lobos. Clemson, and I'm gonna, I want to see Fiend after they lose to Clemson. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to have like a like a podcast episode like five minutes after the game ends where we can just pull Fiend in. Everyone's going to be calling me a fraud. Yeah. Fiend will have New Mexico <laughs> winning the championship. <laughs> oh, boy. Albuquerque. <laughs> no, oh, it's, it's possible. Boy. It's possible. You know, what, uh, hey, uh, one thing, if I could mention just about New Mexico, when when they played really at their best, they played really emotional. They played really hard. They're playing with the attitude, we have something to prove. And uh, it's sort of yeah. like San Diego State last year. You know, people didn't uh, give them a chance. And yeah. uh, sometimes these magical runs are sparked by something. And uh New Mexico may surprise some people here. They they have a shot against Arizona if they get there to that game. And, uh, you know, anything's possible in the uh, NCAA tournament. I just think that their guards match up really well with Arizona guards. I think their mm. big guys match up with the big guys well. Um, I in Arizona, I mean, they didn't even, you know. Yeah, they, they haven't got, been doing well recently. New Mexico, right. recently. they got beat in the semis of their, their conference mm-hmm. tournament. So they're vulnerable. You know, I mean, in New Mexico's on a roll, so that that that'd be my pick. That's my pick, but um, I don't know if that's a consensus pick. My my only thing would be, even if we all agree and we say, let's say New Mexico's, you know, sixty five percent likely to win this matchup, the odds that New Mexico gets to this game are lower. So the only thing would be point wise, if you were trying to, you know, maximize that and be optimal. But I'll let you guys pick whoever you want to pick. Mm-hmm. Well, this is my bracket. You guys got your own. You can pick. And as much as I, I think this is a fun matchup, got to go with Arizona, guys. There you got go. I was about to say trade, or if you picked the uh, size, you know, all the size, <laughs> Balo, Kashad, I got Caleb Love. I just think they're, they're, they're a good team. They're going to be a little too deep. They'll too be angry top after in. Princeton after last year. Top, Toppin's nice, but he's not going to be able to body up on Balo, and neither will uh, Joseph. Uh, I just could don't be a good matchup. Happening. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Good matchup. They both Guys, get out and run. They're both, both fast-paced. This is true. Uh, Bama Grand Canyon? Bama Grand Canyon? Uh, I think St. Mary's could beat GCU that. and Bama, but you never yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not Bama. If I had to go... Jeez, uh, I don't like Alabama. Um, I mean that'd be fun for playing the other team from Alabama. Then, yeah, Alabama, I'll take them. North Carolina, Mississippi State, Carolina. Yeah, UNC's been good. All right, Uh, I'm not going to guarantee, but more likely. And now, I think UNC again, North Carolina. Yeah. I agree with that one. I don't, I don't think I'm going to put up much of a fight on that one. Now, that's a tricky one. It, it just gets uh, hard at the end. You have these, you know, one, two, three, fours. Yeah. It's it hard. I'm going to pick Arizona. I think they're on a mission. I got I a harder they, route, I think. They've been a little up and down throughout the year, but I, I think they they're a uh, route to even get there, too. 
they're going to be focused, man. They're going to be focused. After last year's early exit, I think they're going to be focused in this tournament. Yeah, I think the winner of that North, that New Mexico Arizona game gets a Final Four. So yeah, I go, I go Arizona there. What? Wow! Wow, fiend! Mm. Wow! All right, let's pick it up, pick up the pace a little bit. The South bracket now. Oh, you Houston. know what I say about Longwood? Well, boy, oh boy, you, 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 flavor let's pick guy. Houston. You can, you know, you you can clip this and show it when Longwood what well, Longwood wins by twenty or something. But let's get <laughs> used. To we we can skip this one. This one will be a good one. Is it Nebraska hasn't won a March Madness game? Um, I think this is fifty fifty. I feel like Nebraska's won a, a March Madness game. I don't think so. right. I mean, I know they're a football school, but yeah. Uh wow, they beat Purdue. That's right. They they are having a nice season from, from everything I've been told. Um don't get to watch too much in Nebraska, but uh oh boy. The only power five team to have never won a game in March in the NCAA uh men's basketball tournament. Oh, good lord. Well then I gotta pick them. <laughs> or you gotta pick, pick yeah, is a gambler's fallacy or something? I don't know. I, I think yeah. it's a 50 50 game without that stat, and I think with that stat, it's a 50 50 game. Um, but maybe that says something about coaching or culture or something, but I don't know. I, I guess I'll pick Nebraska. Actually, I, I had a chance to see Nebraska play the other day. They shoot a lot of threes, they move the ball, they play smart, they get good shots. So uh, if they shoot it well, they have a chance to stay close and you know maybe get mm -hmm. a win. Good input. I think if you, you play smart, you value the ball, you tend to win these types of games. Or you get really hot. Well, I'm going with the Corn Huskers. Just because I like to say Corn Huskers. Are we going to get the Dukes versus Duke in the uh, round of 32? <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen, man. Wisconsin is playing some ball, man. They are yeah. playing some absolute ball. And... uh Well, I think I might have picked James Madison for this one, but I, I really don't know the teams too well. You can pick Wisconsin. If, I think that's fine. If this was football, maybe I'd pick James Madison right now, <laughs> but I, I can't do it. I can't do it. And Duke and Vermont. Yeah, I got to go with the Dukies. Yeah, they got they would the be winning in March. Never know. I know everybody's going to be out on NC State after they, you know, just swept all these good teams. I feel like I go Texas Tech. I feel like Texas Tech has pretty been pretty good in general. Up to you guys. Yeah, I take Texas Tech. What are you guys thinking of our bracket so far? All of our picks. We're going to be posting this, and, and like we said, for those of you guys just joining the stream, uh, our ESPN bracket challenge is official. The group name is Sons of Montezuma. You guys can join the bracket challenge. The password name is Kiss the Rings. No spaces. Kiss the Rings. Just as I said it. And uh, the winner, whoever wins the bracket challenge, gets a free t-shirt of their choice at sonsofmontezuma.com. So you guys want to play that, we will send you out a t-shirt if you win. So this is my bracket that we are inputting, Mateo San Diego's bracket. I'll go with Texas Tech on that one. Kentucky, Oakland. Ooh, I don't think I'm going to pick an upset on that one. I'll go with Kentucky. Keep picking all the cats. Yeah. Florida, I Boise, like the winner Colorado. Of, yeah, I like the winner of that one. I, you know, I don't know much about I, either teams, which I know I keep leading with this, but I think that maybe Florida, Boise, Colorado, they're all similarly good. Maybe Boise, Colorado, a little better, and whoever comes out of that game, the only con that they'll be tired. But I feel like you get a little natural selection in that game. You know, the, the team that's hot right now. Boise should know. have been a six seed, so I, I would go. With yeah, Boise. yeah, and I, I like Boise to win them both. Colorado's been yeah, me been too. Playing well, but I, yeah. I think I like Boise to make two wins in a row. Yep. Yeah, yeah, also, so also, just so you know, Florida had a. Uh, uh, 6'10 center that would come off the bench and played really well for them. He hurt his leg the other day, so mm -hmm. he's out of the tournament, so they're not going to be at full strength. So that should hurt them. Yeah, Boise yeah. then. 
And he Boise, really Boise's really played well against Ladie this year. Um, and so, you know, even if they did have the 6'10 center, uh, you never know. And they got Max Rice chucking the ball from midcourt yeah. and swishing it. <laughs> no, only against us. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's got that magic. He's got that magic. We pick in the hilltoppers. I let's let's pick Marquette maybe and get on with it. Unless we have some no Marquette thoughts. Yep, Marquette. <laughs> yeah, they have an all American. Yeah, really cool. like, I mean, one of the best players in the country. I, I, you do we do we think Marquette beats Boise slash Colorado slash Florida? Probably. I think that's where the road ends for Boise. Or yeah, yeah, or yeah. Florida. You know. Yeah. Even if you think, oh, well, Colorado will win those two and they match up well, get, like it just should get to a sweet sixteen. The route. All right, Texas mm. Tech, Kentucky. I'll let you guys talk on this one. I'll go Kentucky. I think Kentucky's been playing really well. They're playing good basketball. I mean, they're putting up a lot of points. They had great shooters. I mean, a bunch of NBA type players. Yeah. The team's maturing a little bit. Is that yeah? Is I, that go, I go case? Kentucky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Duke, Wisconsin. Duke, Wisconsin. Oh boy, that's a tough one. Um. Wisconsin has been playing really good. I'm still tempted to pick Duke. I would. I, I would take game first. I, th- I would take Duke just because I think the Duke Vermont game is not going to be as tough as the Wisconsin mm-hmm. James Madison game. I mean, a team that's just what I was thinking. Won how many games in a row? Um, so just to hedge your bets, I think I would take Duke in that. Six man rotation, Duke. Is that? Is, are you hmm. serious? Six. A man lot rotation? of minutes. I I don't think I could do that, man. I don't think that I could do that. Yeah. I think Wisconsin's peaking. I'm gonna Duke's roll with the lost, Badgers. Uh, as maybe you guys probably know, but the last two, North Carolina State and UNC, um, yeah, you know, like five point games. Before that, they they won at NC State hit by fifteen, but and they're. They're, they're, they're ups and downs. They got a lot of W's. They got a hard schedule, but I, I'd be fine picking either one. Right, we LJ Ryer. I'm going Houston. I'm going Houston in this. Yeah. 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 Houston's, think, uh, Houston's looking real good. Also, guys, we haven't gotten to the bottom of the bracket, so let's try to move this along a little bit. Bam. Let's well. All right. Let's, <laughs> let's move it. <laughs> Houston, Wisconsin. Houston, Wisconsin. I got Houston going. I got yeah, Houston. And if it's Duke, yeah, I got yeah. Houston. And if it's James Madison, I got Houston. All right, all right. Texas. Dean likes well, Marquette. I'll take. I'll take Kentucky in that. I'll take Kentucky. Kentucky. We're rushing through the big decisions. These are the big ones. Marquette, Kentucky. But, I mean, this is Mateo. This is your bracket. So don't let me in. My bracket. This is my bracket. No, yeah. You guys influenced me too much. Let's see. Houston, Kentucky. Boy, oh, boy. I'm going to go with Houston. I'm going to go with Houston as a number one. I just feel like they're on a mission as well last year. After last yeah. year. Mm-hmm. Houston's a good team, I think. All right. The Midwest bracket. Purdue, come on. Yeah. They're not going to let it happen again. Purdue advancing that's the first round. Show Utah me Zach State. Eady versus Oscar Bar. Absolutely. Great. TCU. Great. TCU all day. Nah, I don't want to see all that. Team. They're no, all at TCU guys. all day. They're going to wipe the floor with Utah State. Uh, nope. uh, yep. I, I agree with Fiend, teams. but I'm, I want to see that matchup. I just want to see, want to see that. Matchup. To be fair, if if they both lose to Purdue, and that's no guarantee, but then this this game is worth one point if you're picking the eight nine, and then the one wins anyway. So, don't put your faith in the Aggies in March. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Bill, you, you got anything on that Utah State well, TCU? Yeah. I mean, I agree with uh, Fiend that I think TCU, they really defense, play well defense. It'll be a physical game. And uh, I think how the tournament is called, especially in that game, is, uh, is could play a factor because great Osborne will, will get inside and just stand in the post forever. And if they allow that, it's going to help Utah State. But I don't think that's going to happen. I, I would take TCU. All day. Oh boy, both you guys, both Sorry. you guys. Uh, I'm not gonna go. All right. Uh, I think they're both good teams. I, I don't know as much about TCU, but 
Yeah. I think I'm Utah switching State's my pick. Team, I think TCU more more game. Dairy Queen for Utah State. It's <laughs> hard after that game. TCU's gone going backwards here. Loss, win, loss, win, loss, loss, win, loss. I mean, they're in a good conference, and that final loss was against number one Houston, you know, but they, they I don't know, beat Oklahoma by seven, lost to UCF by two in the recent games. Now, they're, isn't they're a good team. Is it McNeese State on fire? Is it, let, Let's move yeah. on from that game. Yeah. McNeese State is on fire, right? They are. I, they are, yeah. I think I'm going to pick them over Gonzaga. Ooh. I think I'm going to do that. Ooh. All right. I'm going to do it. Where's that game being played? Where's it being played? That game is being played. Salt Lake City? No. <laughs> nope. Uh, well, if there's an upset I want to have happen, I think I'm going to pick that one. So. Okay. Kansas, the year we beat Zaga at home, you don't want them to be good. To be fair, <laughs> it has no bearing on us anymore. <laughs> yeah, we we got our seating. Oregon, South Carolina. Oregon won the last Pac-12 tournament. This is kind of give me game. Oregon. Give me Oregon in that game. South Carolina is a good team, but yeah. Creighton. I think Creighton. Yeah. Ashworth, yeah. he's gonna go nuts. This and Matt, Mike will be so happy, happy too. Texas or Colorado After seeing State? Seeing that, I kind of want to pick Texas. Oh. I, I watched like two thirds of that game, but Colorado State got these. I'm not sure if it's just Virginia's defense lacking. They got these really easy twos. Like, how is he that, wide open? And they were just talking about how Virginia is one of the better defenses in the country. You know, that matchup that Max A. Smith versus Isaiah Stevens that is going to be an awesome matchup. Maybe Next we can pick. Those are Colorado great State cards. Here. You know, on Colorado State, they are a, a, a tough draw for everybody just because of how they play. You know, not yep. so much dribbling, but they pass the ball and cut. And, you know, they, sure. they'll post the smaller guys. You know, Scott had a huge game tonight for them, right? But if Texas doesn't play well, Colorado State hangs around. Anything could happen, in, you know, in the final minutes. You know, what was the big addition in the offseason for the Rams this year? It wasn't a player on the team. It was our own Tim Shelton bringing that defense to the Rams. The def the, the knock on the Rams in the past was that they couldn't play defense. They're playing much better defense Absolutely now. Absolutely playing he defense. I saw really that was... imparted. Yeah, that defensive philosophy on the Rams. I, I like the and Rams they're smart in with the game. ball on offense too. I like the Rams in that game. The, the one wow. thing also, Fiend, just playing on that is they play really good defense and don't foul. So, you know, they don't yeah. give you free free throws to get to the line. And then offensively, they don't turn the ball over usually. So they're going to get a chance to get a good shot every time down the court. And they're usually going to shoot a really good percentage. All right. I'm going with it. I'm trusting you guys, letting you guys take the wheel on that one and picking the Rams. You want to pick the volunteers here? Yeah, I don't think St. Peter's is going to be yeah, the upset special. You never know, but let's – now Tennessee, will the Rams be able to get past Tennessee? That may be Ooh. where it ends for me. I, I think that's probably where it ends because I think Colorado State like finally meets a team that is a great uh, physical defensive team. I, I think Virginia was a good like pack line kind of scheme defense, but I think Tennessee mm. has a lot more physicality um, than the Rams can match up against. So I would pick Tennessee to move on. Creighton and Oregon. That's tricky. Creighton, I think. They, they've they been I, – I know you guys are all hot on Oregon, and I don't even know if Oregon, South Carolina. South Carolina could be Sweet 16, you know. Um, yeah. I think the non-Akron teams could all be Sweet 16 teams. No offense there. But but Creighton's been been ups and downs. They're, when they make threes, they could beat anybody. They're very kind of bipolar there. But they, they get hot in March. I think that, you know, that that loss to us last year in the Elite Eight is probably really making them hungry for a run through the tournament. I, I would take Creighton. Yeah. Yep. I think they're, they're quality, man. They got veteran leadership there. They're going to be okay. Now, you guys, thank you guys in the chat saying KU's one of their best players is out for the entire tournament. Mm -hmm. I think this is a perfect spot that McNeese can get past to them. Zaga over McNeese. Yeah. <laughs> Zaga has a 16 and they can – Damn. Oh. <laughs> McNeese maybe, State, maybe, baby. Maybe, yeah. Lake go, Charles, McNeese. Louisiana. Man. 
as long as whoever you pick, as long as you don't have them go winning the next game, I don't care if you pick them, <laughs> as long as they lose to either Purdue or TCU in your bracket. All I'll right, who Purdue. we got, guys? I'll Purdue. I'll take Purdue. Then have Purdue beat McNeese. Guys. I mean, I'm I'm fine if McNeese in real life if McNeese wins, but in, in your bracket, you got to pick Purdue here. Yeah, absolutely. That's and that's Purdue's where it ends. Definitely going to lose to Great Osterbard. You can you can quote me there. He's he's just going to score 87 <laughs> points on them. He's going to be the great. All right, coming down. Let's get to this Creighton, Tennessee. Creighton's on a, on. A, is this the chance that they get yeah. to uh, you know get breakthrough that they've been trying to for so long? Uh, this is an important one because I think these no, teams are likely I, to get here, and it's worth more points and has more implications. Dalton is an All American, correct? Dalton, yes. T Mac says Tennessee. What's your reasoning, T Mac? Defense, defense, defense. As an Aztec fan here, I'm, I'm liking yeah Tennessee and Iowa State and Houston defensive guys. All right. Tennessee finished with the last two losses, Mississippi State and Kentucky. Mississippi State by, is that 17? <laughs> now Purdue, Tennessee. That is a juggernaut. I feel like Tennessee would win, but I feel like Purdue's more likely to get to that game. No, nah, give me give me Purdue to the Final Four. Yeah. I, I think that they really real kind of figured out after last year losing in the first round what they needed to change. And, you know, they're shooting the ball much better from the outside. Yeah, they take threes outside. They, and twos. They're great at shooting threes. Well, and then Edie. So they don't, you know, like they don't have a situation where if they pack it in on ED, guys can't hit it. Now, could, could they go cold? Yes. But they're much better shooters this year than they were last year. So Seven I and O. Oh. Yeah. You know, Seven and O oh against top 25. Yikes. And all these stats, you oh. never know. Maybe they played fringe top 25 and Tennessee played top five. But, you know, or that, like opponents things, like it doesn't take into account like adjusted or conference. Or anything. Yeah, I, I like Purdue there. All right, guys, if you can see... We are now at the final four spot. A reminder, you guys can compete against this bracket, which is mine, and all the other guys, which will be making their brackets. ESPN's tournament bracket challenge. Go there and sign up. Sons of Montezuma is the group name. Kiss the Rings is the password if you have not seen it yet. Kiss the Rings, no spaces. Kiss the Rings, the winner gets a free T-shirt of their choice. And, well... Let's take a look at the final four, guys. Let's take a look. Houston, Purdue, UConn, Arizona. This is going to be an awesome final four if it is the case. The only thing that would make it better is if the Aztecs were back in there, of course. Of course. Um, um, what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? <laughs> San Diego State versus New Mexico. That would be an awesome revenge final four game. <laughs> Great. Well, we could play Kishad. Oh boy. Well, nah. Kishad's getting bounced. Sorry, Kishad. Oh. So I hedged my bet. more love once again for New Mexico than Kishad. We get some boost sound effects in here. <laughs> Bill, what you got to say about this potential Final Four match yeah. on in Arizona? Yeah. I I'm taking UConn. I, I think Arizona is really athletically yeah. talented, will match up, but uh, UConn is sort of like Houston. They're just so physically enforce you into certain situations on offense and you don't get good shots against them. Should be a good game, but I just think UConn has a little bit more to get through. UConn just looks like the best team in the country right now. Yeah. The, the one thing that I, I want to say, I keep saying this, and I'm I'm no bracket expert here or anything, but is it since most of the predictions will fall apart by Sweet 16, Elite Eight, Final Four, you're mostly just picking what team you think is more likely to get to the Final Four championship. You know, I mean, the route, it might be UConn versus another team or Arizona versus another team here. So if that is the case, because if it's neither, then it doesn't really matter who you pick, you know. But likely it's, you know, either UConn versus non-Arizona or Arizona versus non-UConn or neither doesn't matter. It's unlikely to be UConn versus Arizona, so... Pick who you think is going to go the furthest, I'd say UConn. And they've proven it, right? They've proven that they, yeah. they can get the journey done. So 
I hedged my bets in Vegas back in November when we were there for the Aztecs beating Washington and St. Mary's. I put money down on UConn, Arizona, and San Diego State. So, hey, hmm. I'm going to go with UConn. All right, guys, Houston and Purdue, we're almost there. The other Final Four matchup, we're looking at Houston and Purdue. You look at the points per game. Of course, yeah. Purdue with all the offense, Houston with all the defense. This is just a, a clash of styles. Six and two against top 25, seven and oh against top 25 for Purdue. Woo! Purdue. Who are you guys picking? I got Purdue. Purdue, yeah. yeah. And I just pick the team you like better, not necessarily the one in that matchup because the odds of the matchup occurring are less, but the odds of the team getting there. You know, we're, we're assuming that the team gets there and we're picking them basically. Anything to uh, the contrary, Bill? No, I, I agree with that. Also, you know, and I think they said a 15 uh, out of the last 24 years, number one seeds won the championship. So, you know, Arizona's second seed, you know, UConn, number one, getting in. The other two are also number ones. But uh, I just think UConn, it'll be UConn. And, and I'm hoping Purdue. I like Purdue a little bit more than Houston. But Houston uh, – they're pretty tough. I wouldn't be surprised if they made it either. All right, guys, let us know in the chats. I know we need some upsets. I had McNeese State getting to get into the Sweet 16, but I think that's all all the upsets that I'm the only one here thinking Gonzaga is going to win the first game. Hey, hey, hey. Well, not the only one. This is just my bracket. Yeah, yeah. You guys got to fill your brackets out. So, UConn and Purdue, the two. Giants, they've been slaying everybody. Oh boy, they've been beating up everybody. All if this matchup long, does occur, guys. what a what a TV, uh, what a media thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. what a watch must watch. Eighty-one points, eighty-three points for Purdue. Sixty-four points opponents. I, I don't going. know about the point seventy punch. UConn's defense is a little better, but I don't know about oh. the, oh, the points per game bonus points per game unless they play the same opponents, you know. Uh, you know, you play who you play. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that Big Ten or Big East are better or worse or something, but it's you know if you know the the Big East is more defensive and the Big Ten's more offensive, then it you know throws it off. And you have non-conference. It's a general general observation yeah. that they're more of a defensive team, uh, but yeah. it's not by much, much, much. I'd say who who do you pick to win the championship? Like without looking at the matchup. Boy, oh boy. Maybe I'm kind of I'm, I'm kind of gaining the system or doing the unintended you know thing, but. If you're trying to maximize points, who's who do you think is going to win? Not who do you think is going to win this matchup? Bill, why are the UConn Huskies going to win this game against Purdue? Why would they win? I just think that, you know, they're really athletic. They have position players, you know, at, you know, at each position, the guards uh, up front, they have length, they have everything going for them. Uh, I think they're the best team. You know, I think they're going to win. However, as a basketball fan, I would love for Purdue to win because of Edie, you know, of what he's meant to that program. And over the years in the NCAA tournament, you've had where some guy would go for 40 points or something, you know, and maybe he'll have some huge game and there'll be foul trouble. And, you know, you just never know in the end. But if if I was betting, I would bet UConn. Mm. I think these teams that rely on one guy don't do not do as well. And I've, I've seen some stats on that just in – past final fours the past you know five six years that the teams that rely on one guy maybe that's a, that's san diego uh, state oh no they do so well you know <laughs> no um so the reason why i would pick purdue is yeah. back in 2018 virginia lost in the first round as a yeah and they ran it back to yeah. number 16 seed umbc and in 2019 on the way to their final four they actually beat purdue in the elite eight and won the championship purdue last year loses lost to farley first. dickinson as the one seed it's only the second time well, i think ever I happened was the 16 yeah. seed beating a one i think Purdue is probably the team of destiny this year and will do the same thing that Virginia did in 2019. They will run it back and cut down the nets in Phoenix. I'll, I'll agree with you that they're more motivated. Although I'm sure UConn's motivated to go back to back for the first time since the dinosaurs here, you know, but I'll agree with you. They're more motivated. I just don't know about any superstition about well 
happened to once before. Guys, uh, it's interesting too, and I know you guys are much younger than me, but if you'll remember 1985, Villanova versus Georgetown. Yep. You know, Villanova playing a perfect game, shooting over 70%, doing all the little things. And I'm not comparing this game to that, but I'm saying there may be another team that shows up in the final four that may be the team of destiny that may, you know, get a break, make a late free throw, make a buzzer beater or something like that. And Zag uh, Baylor more recently, you know. Yeah. S D H S U C H S E S U. Guys, I I love you guys' points. Fiend, Purdue is on a mission. That they were embarrassed last year. They're angry. They got a lot to prove. I'll put my um, vote for for UConn. We dislike UConn, but I just feel like UConn, and we you know I see UT Mac. You don't like Coach Hurley. UConn is so like well coached. They're just so well coached that they they mm -hmm. are on a, they play on a different level. I feel just both sides of the ball. The attention to detail, the discipline. They look less and, beatable than Purdue, I think. Yeah. I think yeah. I think that all three of you guys know know more about these teams than I do again, but they 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 seem less beatable when I look at Purdue when they lose and UConn when they lose and UConn when they come back and Purdue when they come back. So it's not that hey, it's going to happen, it's just my just my gut, my gut saying. So the now, unfortunately the national championship we're picking, I'm picking on my bracket is UConn. So I don't, I don't know if that deserves a, I don't know if it deserves that or not, but Boo that's what man. it is. Boo this man. <laughs> you got to make the bracket with Purdue and then get your free shirt. Uh. <laughs> so that's it. That's my bracket guys. Got UConn winning it all. Unfortunately, I hope the Aztecs can, can do it. I believe, I believe, but you know, when it comes to filling out the bracket, it's all fun and game. It's all fun and game. Code is kiss the rings. I just want to cast that ticket. <laughs> Code is well, I, I want to go to Glendale and watch a fun, another Final Four with our guys. Oh. That's what I want to do. I'd love to. No side trips to Vegas this time. No, no, no. no definitely not that. <laughs> T-Mac, the two SDSUs in the Final Four. Wasn't South Dakota oh, State boy. a 15 against like a good two seed? Ooh. I remember. All right, guys, when are you guys going to fill out your bracket for your bracket challenge? Probably tomorrow. All right. It's too All late. Right. We, got, we got some more playing games tomorrow. I'm looking forward to that. Colorado State won tonight for the Mountain West. Got us those credits. Hopefully a little bit more action. Yeah. See if the Broncos follow up. It'll be a fun game. Yeah, yeah. All right, everybody. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you, Bill. A rear SD sports fiend, Aztec flavor guy from the show. Thank you guys for joining, doing this little impromptu live stream. We actually lasted pretty long, filled out the bracket. And once again, everybody, remember, go to ESPN Bracket Challenge. Sons of Montezuma is the group name. Once you join in, the password is Kiss the Rings. Winner gets that free T-shirt that flavor guy was talking about. Any of the T-shirts at SonsOfMontezuma.com. All right. <laughs> Any other last thoughts, guys? Any last thoughts? Bill, anything? Yeah, just, uh, you know, it's fun being with you guys today. You guys do a great job, you know, covering Aztec basketball, following them. You know, it's a great program. So, uh, you know, I know a lot of people don't get a chance to tell you that they appreciate you, but you guys do a nice job. So thank you very much uh, for allowing me to share some time with you tonight. Go Aztecs. Thank Thanks, you, thank Bill. You, Good seeing you. you. Thanks to the Super Chats. Thank you, Quinn. Thank you, Team Mac. Appreciate it. Thank you to everyone who uh, supports us and, you know, came out and listened to us ramble on for about an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> but uh, appreciate it. And thank you, Bill. It was good, good hearing the perspective and analysis and everything. Thank Absolutely. you. Appreciate you guys. We'll try to do some more, guys, as the, the March Madness week goes on and hopefully uh, an Aztec victory on Friday. All right, everybody, go Aztecs. Have a good night. SonsOfMontezuma.com. Go Aztecs. Yep. Thanks. <laughs> go Aztecs.